Let's make this blue hour photo pop using a little bit of Lightroom editing. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. As always, let's start with some basic adjustments. This means for this scene, there is a little bit of distortion. I didn't place the camera properly. So the church is kind of leaning towards the left side and we want to fix that. I'm going to open up the transform panel for that. And all we need to do is work on the horizontal slider right here. I'm going to bring it down very slightly and you can see how this will help bringing the church a little more to the right side. This is looking much, much better. As I adjust this slider, I'm just paying close attention to all these guidelines overlaying the image. These are really, really helpful. Now I also can spot this image isn't really straight. So I want to head up into the crop tool and I want to carefully rotate it again, paying close attention to the grid overlay to nicely straighten this image. This is looking good. Of course, we can also crop it a bit to get rid of these gaps towards the side. All right, that's looking good. I'm going to fix the remaining gaps later in Photoshop. For now, let's continue with basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. Right away, let's change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will push the base saturation quite a bit and I want the scene to be very well saturated. Then before I work on the white balance, I want to first work on the exposure just so we can see some more details and how the white balance will affect those later on. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm only going to raise it a little bit. I don't want to risk too much clipping in the brightest areas. You can already see it indicated in the histogram. Now I'm going to bring down the highlights to fix that. Although I will not be able to fix all of the clipping because of the very bright highlights in the windows and in the street lights. But this is looking pretty good. Now the shadows are still too dark, so let's raise them. I'm also going to raise the blacks for the same effect. And I want to raise the whites just to stretch the histogram some more, giving this image some more contrast. So I think that's looking pretty good this way. Now let's add a little bit of texture for some more sharpness. I'm also going to add clarity to boost the midtones contrast. And I'm going to increase the DAs just to give this image a clearer look. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance to boost the colors. All right, this is looking good exposure wise. Now I want to work on the white balance. For a blue hour scene, this is looking pretty solid, but I want to do things a little bit differently, introducing more warmth to this image. So I'm going to slightly bring up the temperature. I just think it looks better this way. So right around here, I'm quite happy with it. And that's the image of the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick and you will see a big difference when it comes to the exposure. We have much more details in the foreground and the highlights are also much better exposed. Now we need to do a little bit of masking to really make this shot pop. So let's go into the masking panel. We can start with something simple. Let's work on the sky and all we need to do for that is to create a new sky mask. Lightroom doesn't have any issues with that. You can see we have a perfect mask for the sky and I want to introduce some more contrast. And at the same time, I want to specifically make the sky warmer, reducing the blue tones a little bit. Again, that's something I like for this kind of blue hour image, but we will lose some of these blue tones as I raise the temperature. So somewhere around here looks quite good to me. What this will do is we still have some blue tones, but we will give these clouds up in the sky some more warmer tones. And I think that's a great color contrast and really helps make the sky look much more interesting. I also want to bring up the clarity for the whole sky. Again, this will help to make the clouds pop a little more. So that's it for the first mask. Let's continue with another one. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to target the upper right corner like this, where it's very dark. Now I want to make the, this part of the sky even darker, but I don't want to affect the church in the foreground. So we need to modify this mask by subtracting. And here we are choosing select subject. This will get rid of the church from the linear gradient. Just like that, we have a perfect mask for this purpose. So all I'm doing now is to bring down the exposure. That's a bit too much. Let's tone it down like this. This basically adds a very nice kind of vignetting effect, making the top of the sky darker while the bottom remains brighter. 
In fact, I actually want to make the bottom part of the sky a little brighter. So let's use another linear gradient. This time I'm coming up from the bottom, just targeting the brightest parts of the sky. Let's rotate it a bit like this. So again, we only want to really affect the sky. This time I'm going to click on those three dots right here, choose intersect mask width, and here we're choosing select sky. Again, we have a perfect mask for that purpose. I'm going to bring up the exposure, making the sky in the background brighter this way. Then I also want to bring up the whites, further increasing the brightness. We could also give it some kind of glowing look by increasing the blacks a bit. All right. Then I want to introduce more warmth to the brightest part of the sky. So I'm going to pull up the temperature a lot. Okay. I'm also going to increase the tint. And then let's bring up the saturation. Again, this will help make these clouds look more interesting as we are adding this warmer tone to them. Now let's also work on the church itself. I'm going to create a simple select subject mask for that. And in here I'm starting with a bit of contrast. And then I'm going to tone down the highlights just so we have a little more details in the brightest parts of the subject. I'm going to increase the shadows, which should help make it a little brighter. And then the church might be a bit too yellowish. So I'm going to fix that by slightly toning down the temperature. Okay, might as well bring down the saturation a bit. Wonderful. And of course we can make it look sharper and clearer by introducing some more texture and some more clarity. Perfect. I want to use another subject mask and I want to subtract a linear gradient leaving only the top part of that tower in this mask because I want to make the top part darker by bringing down the exposure. This will give this whole building just a more mysterious look in my opinion, making this whole scene more interesting this way. I think we could bring it down even further, just like this. Perfect. Then let's also work on the foreground. There are a few things we can do. Let's start with a simple linear gradient. I'm covering the very near foreground like this, and I want to make the texture of that foreground pop. And that's really, really simple. What really helps to achieve that is to increase the clarity. Now watch what happens. As I push it up, you can see the structure becoming more and more visible. I also want to bring up the texture just to add more sharpness to the foreground. And I do think I want to pump up the contrast as well. All right, this is looking great. Now I still think the foreground is a bit too dark. So let me create a radial gradient and let me place it right below the entrance of that church right here. Of course, I only want to affect the foreground. So let's modify this mask, subtracting a linear gradient coming down from the top like this. So we only have the floor level selected. And in here, I'm going to bring up the exposure. Let's also bring up the shadows. Let's increase the whites and let's even bring up the temperature a bit. All right, this is looking great. I might make this radial gradient a little bit bigger. So something like this. Okay, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Now let me turn off all the masks so you can see what a huge difference these make. This was our base image and here we have the image with the masking applied on top. You can see due to the masks, we are losing that pure blue hour look, but I think this is looking much, much better with a bit of these warmer color tones in the sky. So now that we're done with the masking, let's do a bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer and I'm going to start in the hue tab here. What I want to change is the yellowish color tone of the church. I'm going to use the yellow slider and bring it further down into the orange range, making the highlights of this building look more orange this way. I also want to slightly change the sky, giving the blue tones more of a cyan color tone. For that, I'm going to very carefully bring down the blue hue right here. Just a notch like this. Wonderful. Of course, we can also head into the saturation tab. Here, I want to bring up the orange saturation as well as the yellow saturation. Just bringing back in some stronger colors this way. And I might even bring up the blue saturation. Perfect. Now I want to do some split toning through the color grading panel. And let's start with the highlights. I'm going to bring up the hue 
to a warm color tone right around here in the orange red color range. And I want to bring up the saturation quite a bit. Again, this will kind of lessen the blue hour effect for the overall image, but I really like what this does to it. All right, then let's head into the midtones. Here I want to further introduce a warmer color tone. So again, set up the hue and bring up the saturation just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it with the colors at this point. So this should be enough. Of course, we don't want to lose too much of these blue tones. So I'm going to use the shadows here, set up the hue to a cold color tone. And let's bring up the saturation. This will introduce a blue tone to the shadows. So we get a little bit of color contrast back doing this. Okay, then the final part for the color grading will be done in the calibration tab. As always, with most of my images, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. This will further alter the blue tones of the image, but I think it looks great. So let's bring it down a little further like this. And let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. That's it for the color grading. Now there are a few more things left to do. Let's start with the sharpening in the details panel. And as always, I'm going to start by bringing down the radius all the way. Let's raise the details all the way up. Then I'm holding down the Alt key while applying some masking, just like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And that's it, wonderful. Now the only thing left to do is to fill these gaps and therefore I'm going to use Photoshop. So I'm going to right click on the image, go to edit in, and here I'm clicking open as smart object in Photoshop. To quickly fill those gaps, I'm holding down the control key and click on the layer thumbnail. This will select the image without the gaps. Now I'm hitting control shift I, which will invert the selection. And to be safe, I'm going to click on select, go to modify, go to expand, and let's say, expand by five pixels. This will just make the selection a little bit bigger, overlapping the image itself, just so we are safe. Then let's hit Shift F5, and I'm choosing Content Aware, and let's hit OK. Done. Gaps are filled, looking good so far, and I guess that's the finished image. Let's look for a few sensor spots. There are a few scattered around. I'm going to use the spot healing brush to quickly get rid of them. All right, perfect. And here we have the finished image. So let me know what you think about this blue hour look. I hope this whole Lightroom editing tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.